Let's be. Hello, Spooksters, and welcome to episode seven of Spirit and Law. Now, today we're going to talk about a little bit of mythology, and this is going to be the story of Narcissus and Echo. Now, Narcissus may sound very similar to the word narcissistic personality disorder, and that's because it derives its name from the Greek myth of Narcissus. And there's several versions of the story. This is one of the favorite versions I'm going to read you. We're going to dive into the story. And uh, I love how mythology always, it always has an interesting ending. So uh, sit back, relax, and uh, let's talk about Narcissus. Well, now in the story of Narcissus, there is also the story of Echo and how Echo came to be. So let's go back. There's also some other characters here, which are going to be the mum, the dad of Narcissus, and also the famous prophet, which is Tircius. So the mother of Narcissus went to Tircius and was like, hey, I've just had a child, but he was so beautiful and has and is so beautiful that he's broken the hearts as he wriggled in his cot. And she was very worried and afraid that one of the immortals would envy his beauty and then, well, you know, kill him. So she was asking the prophet what advice he could give or what he could do or if he foresaw any danger in the child's future. And then he shook his head and simply said, the gods pose him no threat. He's going to have a long life unless he learns to know himself. Shaking her head, the woman walked away and didn't take much advice from this quote, which actually in itself is foreseeing for what happens next. So years went by and he was breaking hearts left, right and centre. He became a hunter and went to the woodlands quite a bit. And now whenever any woman went by him, uh, they basically fell in love with him, but they never approached him because of his flaw. Because he wore about himself a glassy pride and that kept his suitors at bay, so they never kind of wanted to do anything else with him. So now we're going to go all the way up to Olympus, where Zeus is. Now Zeus is just running around doing what Zeus does chasing nymphs, kissing, you know, all those things, pursuing and so forth. And he never really hid any of his behaviour at all from his wife. So she was kind of uh, sick of this and what was going on. And hey, like, you got to be faithful, but he wasn't going to be faithful. Um, he'd actually enlisted himself the help of a nymph called Echo. Now, if Zeus's wife, Hera, came too close to catching Zeus in the act... Echo was to distract her with an endless stream of pointless prattle until until he had basically finished his job. So they kept continuously doing this over and over again. And you know what happens here. Hera's going to find out. Hera's going to walk in. And, and she did. She found out the trick. She saw Zeus doing what he was doing. And then she kind of put a lot of anger onto Echo. And she then says, Nymph, always you want the last word. From now on, you shall have nothing else. And then... The minute she said that, Echo opened her mouth to answer, and the only words that came out of her mouth was nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. So then all she could say, basically, was echoes of other people, and she could never speak for herself. She was also condemned to trail behind others and stealing the meaning from their last few words. She then went down to the earth to kind of maybe start a new beginning. And by chance, she stumbled upon Narcissus, and then the minute she saw Narcissus, she fell in love with him, because everyone does. And then for continuous months, she just kept following him and waiting for the words to come over, which she could help, you know, proclaim her love and say, I, I really adore you. And, and basically, it wasn't happening, because she can't say anything, she can't speak her own thoughts. But at last, on one of the days that Narcissus and his friends were hunting in the forest, they became separated for just a moment. And then Narcissus literally reached out and said, is anybody there? Echo joyfully stole the word and said, here, then come to me, come to me. She ran to him. She put her arms around him and he pushed her away. He's like, get off, get off me. Who are you? And then he kind of, his reaction was very kind of rude. And very kind of egotistical. And was just like, hey, I suppose you're like all the others. You love me. And then all she could respond to that was, love me. She said, love me. I would rather die, Narcissus said. And that, <laughs> and he, he was really, really rude. So he said, I'd rather die than let you lie with me. And then she could only say, lie with me. And then she said, lie with me. He said, leave me alone and fled. Alone. 
said Echo, alone, alone. Now, she was having a really hard time here because honestly, what can you do when the only thing in the world you can achieve is basically the last word? So what happened really is over the years, she carried on following him and she became more and more slender in her appearance and her sorrow just made her sadder and she became very kind of like bony, very pale. And then one morning she tried to stand up and her sharp bones just raptured through her skin and then her body collapsed in on itself and only... Sadly, the only thing that survived was her voice. And she was hiding in the caves among all the high hills. Little did he know, because of this and because of the humiliation and rejection that he caused Echo, Nemesis, the goddess of revenge, kind of came into play and put a spell on him. And this is when things start to get a little dark. Now, Narcissus was continuously going around trying to avoid what he thought was still Echo, although she was no longer in um, appearance because she's just an Echo in the caves now. So Narcissus goes to uh, get a, a drink of water from the pool. But as he leans over this perfect pool, which is as smooth as a mirror, he leans over the side and he sees his own face. And then... He suddenly becomes filled with this, this complete craving. He, he leans forwards to kiss himself. But it breaks the water into wrinkles. And he gave out all these cries and sighs. And he just becomes absolutely fatuated with his own reflection. And he just, he just isn't having a good time. He is completely in love with himself. So time and time again, he tried to capture, capture himself. So he's putting his hands in the water, trying to, trying to grab himself. And he keeps mistaking this image for another person that would finally complete him. So he just keeps doing this over and over again. And so the prophecy that originally was told to his mother as a warning about him learning about himself and the awful torture, well, it all happened. So he couldn't think about anything else except himself. So he was just, he was just not eating. He was not drinking. He wouldn't even move from the spot and his eyes could never have their fill. At last, he finally did say though, he was like, yes, please come to me, lie with me, love me. When I laugh, I see you laugh. When I smile, you smile. When I cry, you, you shed tears. You give me every indication that you love me, and yet we do not embrace. I think I understand. I'm in love with myself. Always, we will be together, and yet always we will be apart. I loved you in vain. Echo took the words, finally, because Echo heard what was going on, and said, I have loved you in vain. I have loved you in vain. So, Narcissus closed his eyes and he lays his head on the ground and his soul slowly drifts out of his open mouth beneath the crust of earth, down a steep flight of stairs into the underworld, into the land of many guests, the realm of the dead, and his soul drifted across the river of forgetfulness and is left behind, oh, well, left behind is just a memory. Even so, some urge too powerful to resist draw him back to the edge of the river, where it leant over the side and stared into the greasy smear of a reflection that quivered on the surface of the water so even though he's dead even though he is dead his spirit still craves himself so up on earth rumors reached the city lovely narcissus was dead so the people searched the forest to burn the corpse with proper honors but they never found the body of narcissus instead all they could find was a delicate flower of white and yellow petals leaning over the edge of a pool as if gazing at its own reflection. So it's a really kind of interesting story. And I love how, in a sense, that's where we get the origin of these words for. That's kind of very interesting. And the flower itself is meant to be a daffodil. So that's meant to be narcissus uh, in, in flower form. And it's creepy in a sense because even at the end, uh, if you cool up in the mountains, you can hear Echo calling back to you. So the fact that n the Echo is always there, like the Halvest Storm, I don't know, it's just, it's interesting in a sense and it kind of leaves like a, a bit of a quiver down your spine a bit, really, with uh, good old Echo and Narcissus. Uh, do you think uh, Echo was kind of, um, what's the word? she was meant to have that kind of punishment like that was a good enough punishment for helping Zeus and so forth do you think she should have been condemned to that level or do you think that it was a terrible punishment 
before that. But with Narcissus, it seems that a lot of it, from my opinion, is very self-inflicted. And I think the mum should have maybe taken more interest in the warning that was given at the start of the story. Instead of just being like, yeah, whatever, okay, uh, we can't do anything about this. Uh, my son is just beautiful. I just don't want anyone to kill him or any of the gods to kill him. When at the end of the day, Nemesis does put a little bit of a spell on him. And he is shown that perfect, perfect pool of water. <laughs> so it's really interesting. And I hope this story stays with you. And now you know where the word nastiest comes from. And the plant, the dandelion might actually be nastiest. And if you look at like psychologically underneath a narcissistic Narcius, there is a very kind of fragile soul that is always looking for this this completion that they can never really obtain and in terms of echo i don't know how to psycho analyze that maybe if you uh, i don't know if you fall in love with someone or you completely devote your entire life to them the only thing that you will become in the end is just an echo of their own personality and their persona as opposed to yourself I think that's how I can kind of sum both characters up in different sense and experience. I don't know. How would you sum up these two characters? And did you enjoy the story? This is me finished with Spirit and Law episode 7. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm going to be diving into a lot more lore. And also maybe updating the podcast thumbnail. I might work on it today and give it a little spruce up. But yeah, as always, thank you for listening, Spooksters. And I'll see you next time.